Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. We will call this meeting of the Rules Committee to order, and I will note for the record that there is a quorum present. First order of business is approval of the minutes from Tuesday, April 9th. Vice Chair Hollins, would you care to move the minutes? Uh, so moved, Chair Long. Any discussion to the minutes? Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are adopted. Next, we have uh, several deadline waivers before us this morning. Pursuant to Joint Rule 2.03, uh, the bills before the committee for a waiver after missing deadline. The purpose before us is to waive the deadlines for further action and to recommend a re-referral for a substantive hearing. So we won't be accepting amendments or public testimony at this time. The first bill is House File 5274, Representative Stevenson, uh, regarding uh, uh, sports betting and horse racing. The reason for the wa waiver is, the, oh, excuse me, this is the, the horse racing uh, bill. Uh, the reason for the waiver is this is an emergent need that arose after deadline. The Racing Commission only approved the historic horse racing on Tuesday, March 26th, which was after deadline. I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 5274, and that House File 5274 be re-referred to the committee on state and local government finance and policy. Discussion to the motion. Leader Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I appreciate the reasoning given uh, for this missing deadline, but can you tell me what would happen if we actually didn't uh, do this work this year, even though it was an emergent need? Well, Leader Damon, I think the bill is clarifying the authority of the Racing Commission with regard to this particular um, issue, and so if we didn't, then the decision of the Racing Commission would go forward. Leader Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I am quite surprised at the number of deadline waivers that we are working through this committee. Can you tell me, Mr. Chair, how many more are expected going forward as we have about five weeks left? And I believe this is a record number of deadline waivers ever um, throughout a legislative session. Well, uh, Leader Damoth, I can't tell you with any uh, precision. I know that today we're doing six. I suspect that they will, will uh, trail off as we go forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Representative Rarick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you let us know what it's doing in the Senate? So the bill in the Senate is also in front of their Rules Committee for a post-deadline waiver. Thank you. I did see that as well. I just wanted to point out that if we're going to be doing rules waivers, that we should have equal things happening in both bodies so we can actually move it forward in an expedient way. So um, I also have concerns. I started to add up how many we're doing rules waivers, and I have been on Rules Committee, I think, 10 years of my 12. And this is the most, most I've ever seen. It probably is historic. This is yeah. unbelievable number. But that being said, at least this one, at least this bill, I can see that there is uh, an emergent need, and it does follow the same path in the Senate. So I, I do want to thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Uh, seeing no further discussion, I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 5274, and that House File 5274 be re referred to the Committee on State and Local Government Finance and Policy. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The motion prevails. Um, so just, just a reminder that uh, we don't have uh, public testimony here today, and I would just ask that uh, viewers in the audience please be seated. Um, the next bill before us is House File 685 from Representative Agbaje, um, Corporate Homeowner Residential Rentals Restricted. The reason for the waiver is that uh, the author was waiting for an updated fiscal note that reflected the DE that was adopted in an earlier stop. I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 685, and that House File 685 be re-referred to the Committee on Housing, Finance, and Policy. Um, discussion to the motion. Leader Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Could you, um, on this particular bill, House File 685, advise the committee how this is moving in the Senate?
Uh, the bill is currently in the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And so if this has not been moved to their Rules Committee over in the Senate, can you um, advise the committee why we are actually taking action on this today if it most likely won't be moving through this Leader, session? Leader Damoth, I uh, can't speak to whether it will move through this session or not. I believe the author uh, is working with the senators uh, to try to find a path forward, and we do our own work in the House. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and that does point out the fact that it would be very advantageous to have the bill authors here where those questions could have been specifically answered um, as far as why we're moving this and what the action is. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Representative Torkelson. Mr. Chair, you mentioned that uh, this bill was held up because it was waiting for a fiscal note. Um, do you have any idea if, if the number of requests for fiscal notes is the reason behind these delays? So, you know, we have a record number of bills introduced uh, this year, far and above any number we've seen in the past. Are we jamming up things for the uh, fiscal note people also besides the revisor? It's a good question, Representative Torkelson. I, I d can't speak to historical comparisons on fiscal notes, but happy to dig into it further. It does seem like we have a number of delayed fiscal notes that uh, are uh, landing bills before us. Uh, Representative Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just re really quickly, yeah, I saw a really interesting path in, this, in the House, uh, you know, kind of bounce back and forth between committees. It was re-referred back and back and back. It was, back, it was like all over the place. I haven't seen a path quite that chaotic in a while. Um, and, but in the Senate, as was pointed out, it was introduced early. It had a hearing. It's sitting in judiciary last session. It hasn't moved. Nothing's happened with it. Um, so again, I, you know, just like I pointed out last time with the Stevenson bill, it had like paths in the House and the Senate, so it would actually look like it could move somewhere. This is not that bill. This bill is not that I can see. Anyway. There's nothing scheduled that I can see in the Senate. Um, I wish, like we said, I wish we had the House author that we could actually speak to and say, okay, so you've had conversations. What were those? Because these are crucial for us to make decisions here in the Rules Committee. These are completely inside this, the bounds of the Rules Committee. And we don't have enough information. So I, I would like to call for a roll call on this one because this is not in the parameters of what the Rules Committee should be doing. There is, there's nothing happening in the Senate. If there is, we don't have the author here to tell us what is happening. Um, so other than you said he's, she's working with the Senate authors, but um, I don't know what that means. It's not in front of their rules committee. It's just sitting there in judiciary languishing, which many bills do. If you know anything about the Senate, you know that the rules or excuse me, the judiciary committee is where lots and lots of bills go to die. So I don't know if this is one of those bills and it's just languishing there and not going to move or if it actually is going to make it through judiciary. And it doesn't matter who has the gavel in judiciary. That is what happens at the Senate Judiciary Committee. So um, I would ask for roll call and uh, I would oppose this rules waiver because I don't see a path that's happening in the Senate and short of having the author here to tell us what's actually going on. I, I have no other information other than to say no on this bill. Uh, roll call has been requested and will be granted. Representative Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And we could maybe clear some of the confusion of our housing chair is in the room with us. He just smiled having been acknowledged. But uh, so this is a very, <laughs> this is a very controversial. Sorry, Mr. Chair. This is a very controversial bill, and it's you been in that. housing a number of times. And I guess my question uh, that the housing chair could answer is his target is fairly meager. This does have a uh, fiscal note. Does this fit within his target? And if it doesn't, why are we even moving this if it's going to just go back to housing to die? Representative Howard. Uh, chair Long, and for the record, I don't always smile when Representative Nash acknowledges me. Uh, <laughs> uh, really noted. But uh, so uh, to answer your question, I know the Representative Budget continues to work on this bill. We're still in the process of, um, you know, the legislative session plays it a long way. So I don't have every last detail um, on this particular bill. Representative Nash. Well, I always, I always do appreciate a good non-answer, Mr. Chair. Um, so again, your bill has been built. Um, this. I, I have to think that this doesn't fit within the parameters of the of the target you've been given, particularly given what we've seen in committee recently on what's likely to get spent. Um, again, very, very, very controversial bill. 
So, uh, members, I, there is, I believe, to quote your speaker, that this is the, the or the speaker, that this is the season of disappointment. It's okay to, to not hug things too tightly and just let them go. Uh, be like Elsa, let things go. Uh, roll call having been, oh, okay, Peter Damon. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, knowing that that fiscal note had been requested, we've got a deadline coming up on Friday. Um, so not having an answer as far as whether or not this fits within the target was interesting. Do you expect that we're gonna be having deadline waivers after Friday, after the third deadline? I can't say for sure, Leader Damon, at this point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, seeing no further discussion and a roll call having been requested, the clerk will take the roll. Chair Long? No. Chair Long, no. Vice well, Chair? Excuse me, we're on the waiver, not the, <laughs> not the motion. I, I'll change my vote to aye. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we had you, Mr. Chair. I, I, we, we had so many motions to table last time, I got confused. <laughs> aye. Uh, Long, aye. Vice Chair Hollins? Aye. Hollins, aye. Leader Damoth? No. Damoth, no. Representative Engen is excused. Representative Howard? Aye. Howard, aye. Representative Hewitt? Aye. Hewitt, aye. Representative Jordan? Aye. Jordan, aye. Representative Lilly is excused. Representative Moeller? Aye. Moeller, aye. Representative Nash? No. Nash, no. Representative Olson? Aye. Olson, aye. Representative Pulowski is excused. Representative Rarick? Yeah, Rarick, no. Rarick, no. Representative Robbins? No. Robbins, no. Representative Torkelson? No. Torkelson, no. Representative Wolgamot? Aye. Wolgamot, aye. Mr. Chair, there are eight ayes and five nays. There being eight ayes and five nays, the motion prevails. Uh, next bill before us is House File 912, Representative Egg Baje, uh, Layla Jackson Law established, dealing with uh, child welfare. And the reason for the waiver was House File 912 was delayed as discussions continued with interested parties on certain aspects of the bill that led it to being heard just before deadline on March 21st. This then meant that its following stops uh, would inevitably miss deadline. I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 912 and that House File 912 be re-referred to Ways and Means. A discussion to the motion. Representative Rarick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm wondering, does this have a fiscal note? Uh, it does not have a fiscal note. Really? Um, Mr. Chair. Representative Rarick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so that's odd because it's in the Finance Committee in the Senate. Mm -hmm. It would be an odd place for it to go if it had no fiscal note or fiscal impact. Um, okay. Well, now I'm really kind of confused because it actually is moving in the Senate. It's made it out of judiciary, which is no easy task. Um, it's sitting in the Finance Committee so I just assumed it must have had fiscal impact. So now I'm just really confused. Uh, so would you repeat why we're, why this is asking for a rules waiver again? So it's not a fiscal note impact issue. Uh, Representative Eric, the reason for the waiver is that uh, the discussions on aspects of the bill led to the hearing being just before deadline. And so the subsequent stops were uh, delayed and past deadline. Um, I didn't say that it doesn't have a fiscal impact. I said it doesn't have a fiscal note. I believe there's an appropriation in the in the bill. Um, Representative Rarick. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks for the clarification. Um, perfect. All right. Um, so I'm assuming then, because it does have a fiscal impact, that's why it's in finance, and we don't have a fiscal note, but... Um, it looks like it's made other progress that seems appropriate. So I would actually support this moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion prevails. Uh, next, we have House File 4822, <coughs> Representative Feist, regarding tax forfeited property excess sale proceed distribution modified. Uh, and this is a, a quote from Representative Feist, but I thought it would be good to read it in her voice. Uh, this bill is a perfect storm of complexity and high stakes as we reform our tax forfeiture laws to meet the needs of a far-reaching set of stakeholders in a way to ensure that this is not vulnerable to future constitutional attacks. We have made significant breakthroughs in recent weeks working with agencies, counties, advocates for seniors and low-income Minnesotans 
property rights advocates as well as across the aisle. Uh, I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 4822 and that House File 4822 be re-referred to taxes. Any discussion to the motion? Representative Robin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you know if this has a fiscal note? Um, ha has it been issued? So I do know there is an appropriation. We'll check on the fiscal note. There is zero cost fiscal note. Wow. That will be interesting. I look forward to the debate on that in the Taxes Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor. Oh, Representative Rarick. No problem. I, so sorry, I thought there was going to be more discussion about it. So I was just looking at the path in the Senate, and uh, it's not, I mean, it's, again, languishing in the Environment, Climate, and Legacy Committee. It, there isn't any further action that's been calendared, and that was back on the 11th of this month. So um, can, we, can you let us know what the path is in the Senate? I don't uh, think I can speak to the next steps in the Senate. Representative Rick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, so this isn't making progress in the Senate. Um, I would I would not support this if it's not moving anywhere in the Senate. We shouldn't be doing rules waivers this late if the Senate isn't taking like action. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm sorry, I misspoke on the uh, fiscal note. The fiscal note's in progress. Rip. Uh, <laughs> Representative Robinson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Do you know Maybe Ms. Adrians can speak to this, but if the fiscal note is not ready, you know, deadline is Friday, will it be ready before Friday? I don't know if we know that answer, but Ms. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair and Representative Robbins. I'm, my apologies for that. That was my fault saying that I was confusing bills. Um, we hope to have a completed fiscal note early this week, so. Representative Robbins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I just wonder what, if, if, Fiscal notes aren't available by deadline this week. Will then there be subsequent rules waivers required for bills to continue to progress? Representative Robbins, I, I think that there are certainly times where uh, fiscal notes can come in late and we can still move bills forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sure. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The motion prevails. Uh, next, we have House File 3689, Representative Hassan, out of home placement plan summary requirement added. Uh, the committee was processing feedback from DHS, but ultimately decided to move this bill once we learned it had no cost, which was after deadline. This was a recommendation from the 2022 OLA Child Protection and Removals Report. It was heard in the Child Protection Task Force and earlier in session. I move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 3689 and that House File 3689 be placed on the general register. Discussion to the motion. Representative Rarick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm again looking at the action in the Senate and it looks like it was heard and laid over in Health and Human Services for a possible inclusion in the omnibus bill, um, which means it doesn't need a rules waiver because it's um, I'm sure that at that moment they thought they probably were going to have a fiscal impact and the fiscal note came back zero, you said, Mr. Chair? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, okay. Thank you for that clarification. Representative Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And riffing off of Representative Rarick on lines 3.11, there's a license now required for scrap metal uh, nope, copper wrong bill. Oh, am I on the wrong one? Yep. That's the okay. next one. All right. Keep going. Okay. Uh, seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. The motion prevails. Yeah, I can. Uh, next, we have Representative uh, Hollins, 30, uh, House File 4461. And since the author is here, Representative Hollins can speak to the reason for the waiver. Thank you, Chair Long. Yeah, so there were a couple of reasons for the waiver. So first of all, we were working it out with the different agencies and where this bill should land within the agencies. And then also talking to other stakeholders, we refined the bill a little bit, took out one whole portion of it, and we're waiting for a new fiscal note, um, which we recently got from the Senate. So the price went down from $61,000 per year to $47,000 a year. 
So I will move that the deadlines be waived for further action on House File 4461 and that House File 4461 be referred to Ways and Means. Representative Nash. I'm so happy now. Sorry about that. The coffee hasn't kicked in. Uh, so I guess to the author, our lines 3.11, there is a license that's going to be required. What is, what's the licensing process and what's the commensurate cost? Is that caught up in the fiscal note that, that you're rolling out? Um, and I would be shocked if we could do any licensure for $61,000 a year, um, if you could. Representative Hall. Yes, thank you. There is, um, there is a licensing cost. I'm trying to look at the actual language. Um, but I know it's $250 annually. And um, it is specifically for sellers of copper wire, so not the buyers, not the purchasers of copper wire, um, or scrap copper, I should say. Um, and the understanding is that the licensing is being rolled out because they don't anticipate a huge number of people who don't, um, because there's an exception if you fall under, if you're a general contractor, if you work in pipe fitting, if you're an electrician, then you don't have to get that license. So they don't anticipate a ton of people um, trying to sell scrap copper who don't already fall into that category. Representative Nash. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And will this be going to judiciary? <coughs> That's kind of one of the things that they would be doing with no represent Paul's. Uh no my understanding is that it was solely going it was solely within the purview of the Department of Commerce and Commerce Committee and lastly Mr. Chair Representative Nash. thank you Mr. Chair um, does is there an IT component to this that uh, is going to be brand new to the state for this to track because obviously the goal is to track who's selling copper or ostensibly stealing it that's what you're trying to get at which is great but I'm just trying to figure out what is the data element to this because you're, you're going to have to be creating data to begin tracking and looking for patterns of people who are abusing this. Uh, and with the creation of data, there becomes cost because you're going to have to stand up a relational database of some sort that is available statewide. So I'm just trying to figure that out. So we're, it sounds like we're getting a little into the substance, but to the extent that this is relevant to our uh, waiver discussion, Representative Hollins. <laughs> sure, I'm not sure. Um, if I can tie it back to the waiver discussion, but I will tell you that um, we've had extensive conversations with the Department of Commerce and they feel, I mean, the, the cost that we have on the fiscal note is what they said they need in order to be able to track that information and that data. Representative Torbis. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, <clears throat> I hesitate to do this because I'm getting into the substance of the bill and I'm not really expecting an answer, but it says here that a renewal application submitted after the renewal deadline must be accompanied by a non-refundable late fee of $500. <clears throat> Apparently, Mr. Chair, deadlines do mean something to some people. Uh, can you explain to me what a deadline is and why we have them in place? I'll, I'll uh, take your point, Representative Torkelson. Any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, oh, Representative Rarick. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can you let us know what the path is in the Senate and if it's in their rules committee? Representative Hollins. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair Long. Um, thank you, Representative Rare. So it has moved from the Commerce Committee into the same place where they are, where we are currently. It's gone to their Finance Committee. It's also been in, included in the Commerce Omnibus Bill in the Senate. Uh, seeing no further discussion, oh, Representative Rare, did you have a follow-up? Sorry. But really quickly, thank yes. you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah, so it is in their Rules Committee. Um, I do have a quick question, though, because you did say something, Representative Hollins, that uh, contractors and electricians, who I'm married to, uh, we might have had a long discussion about that this morning over breakfast. And I'm wondering if you could point to in the bill, if you have it in front of you, where they're exempt. Because as I read it, that's not how I read it. So I'm just wanting to make sure that those that are in regular, I mean, you should see my, my senator husband's scrap barrel of, of copper it, as being an electrician. It's, pretty massive and so I'd hate for him to have to pay a $250 additional license on top of his electrical license. Representative Hollins. Thank you. Yep, it's uh, line 3.29, a person licensed to perform work pursuant to chapter 326B or issued a section 608 technician certificate is deemed to hold a license to sell scrap metal copper. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. No problem, all right, seeing Thank no you. further discussion, uh, I'll renew my motion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. The motion prevails. Uh, members, in addition to our normal Tuesday hearing this week, uh, we also have an 8.30 a.m. rules hearing on Wednesday that will be coming up. Uh, members, that is our business before us, and so we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.
Right.